What if I told you that we can use the stories from Norse mythology and more so Christianity to help uncover the secrets of Mesmer and Shadow of the Earth Tree? Let's start by a quick reference for Merica and Godwin. Their story greatly resembles that of Freya and her son Baldur. For a quick general summary, Baldur was the god of light and Freya's golden son. It was foretold of his death, which then led Freya into madness to prevent it. This reminds me greatly of how Godwin's death drove Merica to the brink. I bring this up because it shows context that the lore of Elden Ring does have similarities and perhaps inspiration from pre-existing religions. Let's look at the very first line of the DLC trailer which references Mikola. Pure and radiant, he wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. Strive is a verb, meaning to hear the confessions of, assign penance to, and absolve. Does this not remind you of Jesus Christ and how he tried to spread the word of God to save mankind from their sins? Mikola wanted to create a world where all were welcome, whether with the grace of gold or not. This is why the Albinaric sought refuge at the Hallig Tree. To help support this even more, we can look at data mining, which we presume has a cut ending for Mikola. If thou covetest thy throne, impress my vision upon thy heart. In the new world of thy making, all things will flourish, whether graceful or malign. Malign here can be referenced to mean those without the grace of gold. Let's move on to the next word spoken. There is nothing more terrifying. I think the line, there is nothing more terrifying here, is in reference to anyone in the lands between having the option to be saved, whether they follow the Golden Order or not. Think about what could be more fearful for an outer god or ruler than its own people no longer needing his power or guidance. I want to skip ahead to this part of the trailer where we see what is presumed to be Mikola's rune. I think clearly this represents Christianity's cross here. But we'll return to Mikola in a second. Let's move on over to Mesmer now. Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship Samson in one so bereft of life? His words can be inferred as asking his mother Merica why she put approval in someone who lost the grace of gold, which we all know that all tarnished have lost. I think perhaps Mesmer lost his grace or his mother's approval, yet questions why she would dare give someone else who doesn't also have grace approval. This is important because it reminds me of even more stories from Christianity. Let's look at Mesmer as a whole first. He wields fire, his eyes remind me of those who communed with dragon communion, which is seen as blasphemous, and we know at one point the dragons were actually at war with Merica but that war was ended due to Godwin. Mesmer also wields snakes and they are even referenced in his helm. I bring these up due to the idea that Mesmer reminds me of Lucifer who was once an angel. The idea comes from the plan of salvation in Christianity in which God gave man free will and their mortal life is seen as a test of faith to see those worthy of heaven. This ties back to Lucifer as he had the idea to remove the agency of choice and thus no one would have the ability to sin against God, not one soul would be lost, and all would be able to return sinless to the presence of the Heavenly Father without the need of a savior. This idea is believed to be what caused the rebellion of Lucifer against God and he was cast out along with the other fallen angels. They were never saints, they just happened to be on the losing side of a war. Maybe the war referenced in the trailer is one similar to Lucifer's rebellion. What if Mesmer too thought something similar? There is a line I think backs this up. Those stripped of gold shall all meet death. What if Mesmer wanted to eradicate anyone who defied Merica, his mother and God, removing the idea of choice? Or perhaps he wanted power of his own, seeing his mother as weak, wanting to take over for himself ascending to true godhood. It would make sense then why he chose to seek power elsewhere, perhaps with the dragons. Perhaps the war of reference here in the trailer is one caused by Mesmer when he decided to try to rise up in power, just like Lucifer did against God. I want you to look at the scene where Merica is impaled. What does a spear look like to you? 
At first, I thought this was something with destined death. But now, I am thinking perhaps the spear was made from the primordial sap of the earth tree. We know in the current lands between, the crucible wields great power and at one point in time was even worshipped. But it is now completely scarce, yet in the shadow realm, you can clearly see in an abundance of it. What if Mesmer got the title the Impaler because he impaled Merica with a spear made of pure crucible sap? Perhaps that was his final sin that caused him to be banished to the Shadow Realm along with those who followed him. What if, for lack of a better term, the Shadow Realm is now Hell for those deemed unworthy or banished by Merica? If you look at the two trees like this you see on screen now, does this not make you think of Heaven and Hell? Two sides of the same coin? This brings me to my next point. The Shadow Realm is where Merica first became a god. If you look closely at this screenshot here from the trailer, you can see two intersecting trees that really remind me of the two fingers. My guess is somehow before the Shadow Realm was removed from the lands between, this is where America used the raw power of the Crucible to ascend. But of course, that is speculation. I do think though that whatever war took place, those who followed Mesmer in battle, whether they were deemed worthy or not, were all punished alongside him, and thus Mesmer and the people who followed him are now in hell. Listen to this line once more. They were never saints. They just happened to be on the losing side of a war. Assuming they were simply following their leader, Mesmer, I find it fitting that not only was he punished, but so were his people. The Shadow Realm is now the place of punishment. Here, Mesmer waits, still believing in his mother and in his own ideals that there is no choice. You are either a golden, graceful follower, or you die as punishment, thus allowing only pure souls to be saved and walk among the Promised Land. We know Morgoth, despite being hidden away by Merica as an omen, still loved her and loved the Golden Order. I think Mesmer is the same way. When you see Mesmer produces flame, you can actually see what appears to be either roots of a shattered tree upside down or its branches going outward. I think this is interesting as it shows his connection to the shattered tree or realm he was banished to. I think perhaps the reason we have little to no references of him in the lands between now is because Merica was ashamed of her own son that tried to rebel against her. This is very similar to how Morgoth again was treated and the omens in general. The final thing I want to say is that in the poem you see on screen now, the line about Mikola divesting himself of flesh reminds me of how Jesus died and yet was risen once more. I think perhaps the veil within the Shadow Realm may be weakening, maybe due to the impalement of Merica. Maybe Mikola is simply our guide down there and he is hoping to use us to finally bring death to those who betrayed him and his family. Or maybe he is looking for the soul of his beloved brother Godwin, which may be the Promised Lord referenced here as well. Anyway guys, this was just short speculation from some things I thought about after looking at the trailer some more. So if you did enjoy this, please like and subscribe because I will be covering this game a lot more once the DLC is released. Comment down below what you think. And thank you so much to all my members who help support the channel. I appreciate all of you. If you want early access to my videos, along with some additional perks for my live streams, then hit join below. I'm Ronan, and thank you so much for watching.